So yeah, why do we care about topology? Um, <laughs> it's so weird, I feel, because topology was like developed it, with, with hindsight, you know? Same thing as with axioms, like the ZFC axioms, is like it was developed to solve a specific problem that already existed. So I, originally I was very confused as to why we need topology. Um, but yeah, Adar, you wanna dive into this one? Um, I, I don't think I have like a satisfying answer. Okay. Uh, what I will say is that topology, at least like general topology, which is the stuff that was in this week's lesson, um, was kind of came out of analysis. Um, and so a lot, a lot of the concepts in at least like, like the more basic parts of general topology are basically direct like analogs or just copies almost of concepts in analysis, uh, which is just like rigorous calculus this is how people like to describe it. Um, and uh, yeah, like analysis applies to things called me metric spaces and topology kind of, and like you can think of a metric space as kind of like Euclidean space. A metric space is something that's supposed to resemble Euclidean space. That's it, like kind of like one hand wavy way to think about it. Um, but topology takes the same concepts that we see in analysis and applies the or yeah, I guess broadens the space of spaces that you can nice. you can apply them to. So you have like continuity in analysis or like calculus, where uh, you know if a function is smooth, then it's it's good, uh, then it's continuous, and then you have like the epsilon delta definition, which kind of depends on having like the the epsilon delta definition of continuity depends on. Uh, it, it, like even if you don't see like the fully rigorous definition, it still depends on having a metric space yeah. because it relies on a notion of distance. Distance, yeah. So yeah, topology kind of does away with that and says you can do everything in terms of open sets or closed <laughs> sets. So it just gives us like a way to define how close things are, like um, distance between two things. Yeah, it's sort of like you can think of open sets as um, kind of telling you how close two points are without really telling you how close they are. So it like feels the very more, indirect. Like, yeah. 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 The, like you can think of it like this. The more open sets two points have in common, the closer they are. That's mm -hmm. kind of like one way to think about it. Can I can I annotate real quick? Yeah. Let me share a uh, whiteboard. Boom. So like if you have like the real line and um, you, I'm assuming you guys both know what the like standard topology means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the one with the ball, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's your real line. Um, and like, we, let's say we have like these two points and like uh, these two points. So like, this is like super not rigorous. <laughs> so just bear with me, um, but you can kind of, like you can kind of think that because these two points are closer yeah. together, there's going to be more open sets containing both of them than mm -hmm. these two points, right? Even though that's technically not true because there's just an uncountable number of open yeah. sets of both, you can kind of think of it. Like if, if we move to like a discrete set, so like uh, let's say this is our set, and like our open sets could be boom, boom, um, what else? Boom, boom, and boom. So like um, if you look at, uh, if you look at this, and this point, like these two points, yeah, they're like closer together than this point and this point. And they also share a more common open set. So the, how many do they share? One, two, three. They share three open sets, whereas this point and this point only share one common open set. <laughs> so again, that's kind of like a pretty hand wavy thing, but it's still mm -hmm. 
still sort of gives you an idea of but what. But can't you like draw those, like, or make those sets like any way you want? Yeah, I mean, like you could have like, you could have this, I just randomly drew the open sets. I mean, not randomly, this is still consistent with the definition of a topology, I think, but it's uh, like, you can make that you can make it that this point and this point are closer together than this point and this point by changing the topology or by right, changing so, what the open sets are. Okay, so the more open sets they have in common, the closer they are. In a, uh, in a yeah, that, that's like that's like one way to intuitively think about it. Okay. Yeah, it's not you, that sh that shouldn't like guide your like proofs or whatever, but it can yeah. help your intuition. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I guess that's same... why we care about topology. Well, to me, um, specifically, that rule or that intuition gets enforced with the rule that if I have, for example, A, B, and C, um, and then let's see, B, C. Let me, actually, before I talk, let me make sure what I'm saying makes sense. Um, actually, forget... Oh, never mind. A, B, and C, B, C. Oh, okay. Uh, I can't get the specific example, but it was something where if you take the intersection between two sets as a rule of a topology, you need the resulting set to also be in the topology. And um, oh yeah, so this isn't a proper topology then. I, I messed it up. <laughs> oh well, no. I forgot about that. <laughs> but specifically, like the idea is that of course the intersection has to be in the topology because oh i think it has something to do with um never mind i lost my intuition oh okay whatever if it comes to me i'll explain it later mm -hmm. um maybe but, i have like a note in the slack or something or like yeah yeah, yeah. Revisit it. yeah 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 i'll try to remember it but anyways the idea or the the reason i think topology is super important is that it defines continuity with as little structure as possible so metric spaces are nice and all, but they assume more than is necessary. Um, and so you can define continuity with less structure. And to me, that's the only reason why it exists. Like it's literally a competition for mathematicians. They go to each other and they're like, I can define topology with less information than you. Like, boom, my definition is better. And they kept it, this up, kept this up until they well, got it's to not. It's not exactly that. They're like, I, I don't. I don't really know the history of like topology and analysis, but I would imagine there was a reason why topology was needed beyond just as a way to generalize analysis. It probably came out of physics or something and I wouldn't be surprised. There's also like another, like there's also like other aspects of topology that were like kind of independently discovered mm, yeah. or created. So this is like, like analysis type topology, but then there's also like topology based yeah. on combinatorics and graph theory. Yeah, yeah. Where you have, have you heard of that problem where it's like, you have like a town with like two bridges and you have to yeah, the like Koenigsberg. cross through. Yeah, something like that. Where you have to like find, find a path that goes yeah, through everything yeah. once. With graph theory, yeah. Oh, I'm reminded at one point he said that there's this problem where, or no, you can use topology um, sorry, you can equip the natural numbers with a topology and then use that to prove that there's infinite, infinitely many primes, um, which is very neat because that's like unexpected, you know, topology yeah. used in... Do you want to hear a crazier proof? Okay. This is topology used in algebra and this is like algebraic topology now. Um, so it's not exactly, re it's less related to this, but... Um, do you, do you guys know what the fundamental theorem of algebra is? Mm -hmm. uh, polynomials, yeah? Yeah, you have a polynomial. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fundamental theorem of algebra basically just says that if the polynomial is of degree n, then the polynomial has uh, exactly n roots. Um, I, it's either exactly or at most. It might, it might be that... Um, it might be that, uh, I think it might be at most, at most yeah, end anyways. roots. But basically you use like an aspect, you basically use like a certain fact about topology that relates to the circle um, to prove this. It's actually a really neat proof. 
Um, I wrote about it on my blog, actually, if you guys want nice. to check it out later. Um, I'll tweet about it at uh, Quantum Mafia. I'll be like, Adar is a pro topology. <laughs> I'm not Go a follow pro. Him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. anyways. So yeah, oh, like topology is applicable to a bunch of like different stuff. Um, but yeah, let's see. I feel we all have a pretty good understanding. Maybe Lana, do you want to explain what is a topology? Even though maybe it, mm-hmm. like we'll try to poke holes in your explanation. You know, okay. like, I feel we all know what it is, but yeah, I mean. Okay, just the way that he described it was it's like a set with like the three different axioms that you have to satisfy so that the empty set, so like say like we have some topology on like some set M, then like the empty set and M have to be like an element of that topology. And then if you take any two to um, elements their intersection also has to lie within the topology. And the third one was like the, I think the union of any element also has to be in the topology. I think those are the three axioms. Mm -hmm. So it's just like a set with some extra rules, I guess. (laughs) A set with some extra rules. Yeah, to create that set. what and then the value of that set is that you equip it with the original set to define continuity. Yeah. Well, it's not it's not just continuity. There's uh, also some other, other stuff too. There's also other stuff mm-hmm. like connectedness well, and about, compactness. Yeah, in the lecture that he just like focused on saying that like, oh, it's important to define continuity. So. Mm-hmm. I think, but yeah. So it's like, essentially, I have a world that I want to create in my head with certain facts that are true and not true. Mm -hmm. I'll start with a set, for example, the real numbers. And then I'll make a choice for topology. I'll be like, I choose to include this set. I choose to include this subset or whatever. I think they're called open sets. So every set in the topology is called an open set. So I'm like, I choose this, I choose this, I choose this, depending on what kind of world I want to create. And then in that world that I have created, I can prove certain things. And I guess ends up being useful later on. When you're also, gonna... um, does he talk in the video about closed sets? Mm, like not really, like he <laughs> briefly mentions it. It's just... really worth talking yeah. about those as well. You um, think it's worth it, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So, because like, if you think about it, if there's open sets, that kind of implies the existence of closed sets, right? Okay. I dis- I disagree. Um, I think they're mutually exclusive. They have nothing to do with each other. I mean, I, 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 well, you'll see that they have a lot to do with each other, okay. <laughs> the way they're defined. <laughs> um, I should specify when I say that they have nothing to do with each other, I mean that a set can be open and closed at the same time can be not open and not closed at the same time can be open and not closed and then closed and not open like right the, but the there's no, like implication between yeah them. yeah yeah but okay here here's how they're related the complement of a open set is defined to be closed and the complement of a closed set is defined to be open so, i don't know if that's true i think it, it is an true open trust set, me wait wait no, Trust I me, think, so it's true. No, no, I know, <laughs> I know you're right. Listen, I know that you're right, but I'm just saying that an open set is defined to be an element of the topology, and then a closed set is defined to be like the complement is an open set, and then a property of an open set is that its complement is a closed set. Like I'm saying an open set is not defined in terms of closed sets, because or else that's circular logic. But I essentially agree with you. <laughs> Like you, you see what I'm it, saying? No, it, uh, like I guess, but it, it's still okay, defined cool. that a closed set is the complement of an open set. Yes, that one I agree with you. Yeah, but that's you all I said. Say, <laughs> but you also said, or I, I, okay, oh, I was just, I wasn't being, okay, I wasn't cool, cool, being cool, like cool. extremely so rigorous. Exists. I was just making Perfect. a slight. I was actually kind of making a joke with oh, what okay. the implies the existence of. <laughs> um. But yeah, so like if we think about the interval, uh, oh, I'm not drawing. You can't? Do I need uh, to? Uh, no, no, it's just I wasn't selecting it. But yeah, if we think about like the interval, like one, 
to this is open in the standard topology. Um, and then if we think about the uh, like complement of this, it would be yep. negative, negative infinity one. Two. Oh, whoops, wrong brackets. Yeah. So this would be considered like a closed set. And then we could have something like negative infinity yep. um, one u. It's basically the same thing, but just round brackets. And uh, then yeah, the yeah, complement yeah. of this would be one, two, one, right? Two. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, that's just like a little, little tidbit. Um, but like one, one interesting thing to think about is just like the definition of a topology and like specifically the second two act, like the last two axioms. Uh, David, do you mind clearing your? Oh, yep, 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 here. So the, the axioms are this, right? Empty set and, whoops. If X is the like space we're looking at, then empty set and X are in T, if T is the topology. Second axiom is finite. Uh, this isn't how he said it in the video. He said like intersections of two, but it's the same thing as saying finite. So finite intersection. Actually, let me just, because it's kind of a pain to draw. Yeah, just finite. like, I, like we, we understand what you mean, I think, by finite intersection. Arbitrary. Union. Yes, arbitrary union. So um, why is that? Why is it finite intersection and arbitrary union? Do you guys have any ideas? I think I have an idea. But Go Lana, if you want to try explaining. No, do you have I am a little lost, so you go okay. ahead. <laughs> well, wait, but... but as long as like like it's clear that this is like the definition of the topology, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So like, what are you lost about specifically? Uh, like how two and three would relate. But it's what? not that they're relating, but but why is it? Why is it finite intersections and like ar arbitrary union can mean like a union of an infinite number oh. of sets, right? Like it can um, be like two, three like a union of two or three sets or like a thousand or, or like an infinite amount, right? Whereas finite, it has to be obviously a finite amount of sets. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the, my question is just why? Why is yeah, it like yeah. that? Here, I'll, I'll try explaining. Um, so just to, as a beginning to explain the context, the symbol that's being used in number two is that you actually have like a first set here and a second set. Um, so this is like a non inf or like it's two, it's two, but if you wanted three, then you could just take two intersected with a third. If you wanted four, you could take one, two, three, four, intersect them all together, but you can't intersect infinite, uh, like infinitely many things. And I'll explain that afterwards. And then the difference here with a big U means that you can take infinitely many sets and then take their unions. And that set is also in the topology. But the specific reason why this symbol here is not a big intersection and then V is because then that would mean that you're allowed infinite intersections. And the, reasons wh the reason why that's not allowed is best given or a nice feel good example is if you imagine a 2D plane like this board here, and I was to give you this set and intersect with this guy that gives you the space over there, right? Then we These can intersect the big, huh? These yes, yes, yes. Sets. Two open sets. So then intersection, then intersection, and then intersection. And I keep on taking intersections. Keep on taking them. I keep on. Imagine I could take infinite, man, infinitely many intersections. I keep on cutting the amount of space in half until I get a point. And a point is illegal. A point you're not allowed to have a point, um, and that breaks the rule of open sets. So that's the reason why a feel good example on why you can't have infinitely many intersections. Let's um, give like a more rigorous one. You think, I, I don't know a more rigorous one. <laughs> I, I can, oh, I can offer but, a rigorous one. But first, does that make sense, Lana? Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, cool. Here, you can, you can try giving a rigorous one of But if I get lost, I'm going to make it very clear. <laughs> okay. Um, it's actually kind of similar to yours, but again, we'll have R with the standard topology and we'll define the intersection of the open sets negative one plus um oh sorry not negative one it would be negative one over n two one over n okay for n or for n like that okay <clears throat> and yeah so this would be this would be like the union um obviously like this right here let me change your color this right here is a valid open set, right? Under the standard topology. Sure. Um, and we're taking, like, this is a valid open set for all N. Can we agree on that? Yeah. This yeah. is a valid open set in, in the standard topology for all N. Mm -hmm. And the union, or sorry, not the union. I, I meant the intersection, my bad. Yeah, yeah. sure. I meant the intersection. Okay. So yeah, the inner, whoops, what am I doing? The intersection of all of these will just be zero. Can we see why? Um, okay, for all of these guys. Yes, I see, okay, yeah. So yeah, the, the reason would be Wait, zero. Lana, do you see why? Could you like elaborate a bit? Sure. Yeah, I was about to do that. Um, so the reason would be zero is give me so like the biggest one of which which of these open sets, which of these uh, like these guys, which of them is the biggest? For what end do we get the largest open set? The one. Yeah. Right. It's just negative one to one. That that would be the biggest one. It has like a length of two. Um, and then give me like any number in the inter and so yeah all of the other open sets all of their points will be within the interval negative one to one mm -hmm. so if there are any points other than zero in this intersection they would have to be in the interval negative one to one right okay that because that's just all of the sets that we're taking the intersection of have their points in the interval negative one to one Mm -hmm. So therefore, any points in the intersection must also be with a negative one to one. Um, so yeah, give me any point in the interval negative one to one, and I will always find you a set in this intersection that doesn't contain that point, right? And because we can, because for any point other than zero, we can find a set that doesn't contain that point in this intersection. That means that point won't be in the in the yeah, like, yeah, sure. intersection, mm -hmm. right? Makes sense. And that's, oh, okay. that yeah, that that's why. Um, that's why it's zero. And like David said, zero is mm. not can't be an open set. It, it can't be an open set because um, did, does he talk about like basis in the video? No, but don't introduce basis because I don't know what it is. I don't. Okay, um, but yeah, it, it, there's. Like a basis basically gives you an easy way to generate the open sets in a topology. Um, and you it's impossible to generate zero with uh, the basis given. Uh, like, don't, just in, don't worry in about it. In this case? Well, no, There's no I open think... interval that's only zero. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> well, no, I think the, the intuition in this case is that we're using the standard topology, which is a ball. Like, that's all that it is. It's a ball without the edges filled out. Um, yeah. Like that's um, an open, that's an open set. It's yeah, like but also, circle. also, 
if we think about how we can have like infinite unions, like why is that, right? Well, uh, if we take, actually, whatever, let me, uh, whoops. If we take the union negative n, n for the same, like n for from one to infinity, so negative one to one for all n, all positive n, um, that is still an open set, right? Because that's basically the same as saying yeah, negative yeah. infinity to infinity, which is open. Um, and uh, yeah, that's kind of why, like, you hopefully now that motivates why, like, the intersections have to be finite. Yeah. Um, and what, also what's interesting is you can define, so in the video, he defines topologies in terms of open sets, but you can also define topologies in terms of closed, closed sets. sets. But let's not dive into it because I, I went and did the research, but I don't think, Lana, you went and yeah 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 let, let, let's move on to stuff in the video <laughs> okay yeah um and okay next point would be the chaotic topology and discrete slash chaotic slash discrete topology um do you want to try explaining that lano uh sure i guess these are just like he mentioned they're like probably the most useless topologies but they're just there do, to do you know why they're like, useless um you can't really do anything with them i guess what do you mean you can't do anything with them? Um, yeah, I don't really know how to elaborate on that. <laughs> okay. But they're just like the most extreme cases. Like the, yeah, guess, it, the just, they're just like topologies that every single set can have, right? Mm -hmm. So sure. they're not, they're, they don't really tell you anything about the underlying set. I mean, mm -hmm. I, the way I thought of it is that later on or in my head the only reason topology exists is for to define continuity and in this case um later on we'll see that the definition of continuity is that for f that goes to a to b um you need to check the topology that is that is equipped with a and check the topology that is equipped with b and the definition of continuity is that um the pre-image of open sets are open sets i believe yeah yeah uh, so that means you look at B, you look at the open, op open sets in B, you follow it to A, and then that determines if it's continuous or not. Um, but if you imagine A being equipped with the chaotic topology, which is just empty set and A, so think about it. The open sets of open sets are open sets. No, fuck. <laughs> the pre-image of open sets are open sets. Um, so you're, you're going to be here and you're following to A and you're trying to find if the open sets of B are open sets in A. But in this case, there's literally nothing in A. <laughs> so the map is never going to be continuous. Like never. Uh, wait, what do you mean there's nothing in A? <laughs> there's nothing. Unless B was also equipped with a chaotic topology. That's not true. You could define a continuous function on, on this. Yes, I said, um, A yeah. Can. In most cases, the map will be not continuous if you equip That's, A with the. I know it's not rigorous, uh, but let's just leave it mm -hmm. at that. Or unless you really want to challenge. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and the opposite's also true. So if you equip A with the power set of A, and then you apply this definition of continuity, and you look at all the open sets in B, and you follow them to A, you'll always find the equivalent set. So the map will always be continuous. And so the point is, why create a world where everything is continuous and where everything is, or, or where everything is not continuous? Like you don't gain any value in creating a world like that. And that's why it's called chaotic. It's called chaotic because nothing is continuous. Like it's also called a trivial topology. Yeah. Or it has indiscreet. Names. Anyways, I digress. Well, okay, yeah, that was my uh, intuition. Let me ask you guys this. Um, what can you say how, like how would you relate like open and closed sets and like the way they're defined with relation to each other how would you relate that to the discrete topology it might be a bit of a vague question so i can, can try you repeat to that <laughs> yeah so we just talked about how like open sets are the complements of closed sets and vice versa, right? Mm -hmm. 
So how would you relate that to the discrete topology? Um, what, can, what can you say about this open sets in the discrete topology? Given so, that, given that the complements of open sets are closed sets. Just to clarify, discrete topology is this, yeah? Yeah, yep. Power set, which means that it has every single possible subset. Mm -hmm. In other words, it has every possible open set. Like, uh, like, well, all of the sets in the power set are considered open sets under the discrete topology. Which means, well, that's something special about open sets and closed sets. I guess. Do you want to just tell you? Because <laughs> the question might be a bit mm, vague that I'm, I'm. I don't know if you can just tell us though. Uh, I think maybe it's better if we move on. Do you know, it's like a really, it's not that significant. It's just like, like, I won't be like spoiling anything. It's just like a little tidbit. I mean, I'm down to listen, but. <laughs> it's literally like five seconds. Okay, sure. Let's see. Yeah, basically all, all that it is, is just all of the sets in the discrete, all, yeah. All of the open sets in the discrete topology are also closed. That's, that's it. <laughs> and both. What? yeah, they're both. Because, like, if you have the set one, two, three, and you impose the discrete topology oh, on see. it, it's just because, because um, let's say I consider one to be an open set under the discrete topology, then the complement of I one see, see. is two, three, right? I see. But I see, two, see. three is also, also a subset. Topology. Yeah, right? That's just okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Because basically, if, if I'm asking, is this open set or no? Yeah, if I'm asking the question, is this an open set? It's the same as asking, is the complement present in the topology? Well, the complement wouldn't necessarily be present, but it's it, just in this case, it is. In this case, yes, yes, yes. But yeah, that's kind of like a interesting thing about the discrete topology cool glenna do you want to try explaining uh some random examples with like zero one two three or whatever or standard topology your choice oh yeah we can go through some examples that blog was like um yeah that was really useful, useful in like uh visualizing if you could just tell me how to draw on this zoom thing <laughs> like i don't know how yeah. to do that so if you try like clicking on the board and then moving your cursor around, it doesn't draw? Oh, no. No? Are you maybe selecting the, so at the top, there's like text, draw, stamp, spotlight. Do you see that? No. <laughs> um, can you share your screen at the same time? Is that possible? Uh, okay. But no, it says that it'll no. stop sharing your screen. Um. Okay, I guess like I can just like I have one note open. I can just draw an example. Are you guys probably won't, or you guys can't draw if I do that? But uh, do do you not see like the green bar at the top? It says you are viewing David Radovelli's screen. Yeah. So do you see view options to the right of that? Mm -hmm. So press that and then mm -hmm. go to press annotate. Oh, okay. Works. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Wait, let's see. Oh, okay. Hey. There we go. Right, nice. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So here's one example, I guess. Okay. So this is A. Mm -hmm. This is B. This is C. So you got everything. Oh. I think okay. this was like one of the examples. And then, like, you can just verify that it's a topology based on like uh, like what's in there, I guess. Like you can see that like all the elements and then you see like, uh, you verify like the second and third axiom. And then like, I guess you can't really draw the empty set, but just like assume it's there. 
I think, well, no, I think that's the thing. Like when you're drawing it, it's just there by default. Like it, it will always be there if you're mm-hmm. drawing it, that is. It's like implied, I guess. Yeah. Um, I think that makes sense. Cause then it's like just, and then, I think that's all of them. Isn't yeah. This? Oh no, sorry, I raised something by accident. Oh, like that? Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, sorry, my bad. Yeah, so I was gonna add. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, and then, I mean, that was the example I think that they put in that one blog post, and then you can just see that, like, uh, any intersection is in there, and also every union. union is in there too. So, hence, it's a topology. Mm-hmm. So it's like an abstract definition, but yeah. How about this? If I was to ask you to break this example of a topology, what would you do? Um, wait, where's the eraser? Uh, I guess if you did this, wait. A intersection. Because then what if you did like, oh wait, no. Actually, I think that would be a topology. I think that would still be topology. But then if you do like B, C, intersect. That's just the empty set. Oh, oh, oh true. Okay, mm, wait. Yeah, empty set, yeah, yeah. Wait, I got, then if you did, wait this you think? i think that would break it wait oh yeah it. yeah that would break yeah because then it's just a b intersect b c uh resulting in b oh. there's yeah. yeah there's no there's no open set that contains only b mm-hmm. yeah. yeah oh oh i think this is the intuition i had for closeness so the idea is that if a is close to b and b is close to c but then B isn't close to itself or something, then that's like dumb, right? That like you break closeness. In this case, it's kind of dumb because like, of course, B should be close to itself. Um, but imagine if B was like actually two elements or something, uh, in which case that explains like the idea of closeness and closest breaking, because then you'd expect the two elements here to also be in the set because they're close to each other except they're not so you break yeah them and like if, if like two elements are always like if there's no open set where two elements are separate then you can kind of think of them as the same element kind of really interesting that's like oh, oh but of. that's like the quotient set oh my god you remember like last lecture with uh equivalence relations and um if two things are equal then you can put on your fuzzy glasses and just pretend that they're the same yeah it's sort it's sort of like that Okay, cool. um, Interesting. There's actually also something called a quotient topology, which oh, nice. basically okay. allows you to identify elements in a topology together. You can kind of think of it as gluing stuff together. Mm-hmm. Like if, you you have say, a, if it's quotient, is it like exactly the same thing as quotient sets that we looked at last time? Um, it's a very similar concept very where you similar. define an equivalence relation uh, to identify elements and yeah, when you like identify those elements, you can kind of think of it as gluing them together. Okay, cool. So yeah, next up, well, I think, yeah, we're nearly done. Basically the two things we have to cover are open sets and continuity. Open sets? Oh, sorry. Or I, I subspace. Meant sub, yeah, subsets of whatever. Um, what are they called? Sub, inherit, inheriting. A topology from another subspace um, topology yeah that's what it's called so i can give give it a try and try explaining yeah 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 so the intuition i have for this is if you consider to a 2d plane um equipped with a standard topology for example um oh and then you give that example with the the mouse uh, going around or whatever, but you don't have to be that fancy. You can just imagine there's a line. Um, 
what do we think here? So the idea is that the 2D, the 2D plane here is equipped with the topology, the standard topology, um, which basically just tells you if you have like whatever open sets, like these open guys here, like you have all of these guys or whatever. Um, and then the idea is that imagine you have a line, then the inherited topology that the line or the line can inherit the topology. And the way that it does that is that it basically takes the big, to, the big topology, the, the plane topology. So I'll call the plane M. This is the big guy. Um, and then the line is the small guy. So you will even draw him smaller. <laughs> and uh, the idea is that you take all the relevant topologies in here and you put them in here, that's it. And the way that you determine if something is relevant is if it intersects with the line. Um, uh, but I'm, I'm stretching the truth as a feel good example. This, this helps me think. Like the idea is that the open set that's over here is irrelevant. We don't care about this guy when we're trying to define the topology on the line N. Um, and so the idea is that if you intersect this open set with the line, you get nothing, you get the empty set. If you intersect this open set with the line, you get the empty set. But if you intersect this open set with the line, then you actually get a relevant open set, uh, which is this open set here. Oop. And that's it, that's the idea. Um, because yeah, that's, that's essentially the idea. Cause yeah, you basically just restrict the really big topology to all relevant topologies in the line and that's it. Cool. Any objections? <laughs> Adar's thinking hard. I'm about to get destroyed. <laughs> um. I'm just trying to think about how to articulate well, why why it's like intersections because i remember when i first read the like definition of a like subspace topology uh, and how it's inherited from the like topology of the bigger set it wasn't all that clear to me why we use um intersections and in, in like, what would be the alternative like intersections like the alternative would be what i what i like messaged you before oh. where Oh, like, okay. But the like, let, let's tell a lot of what the alternative is. Yeah, yeah. Can I try explaining this? Sure. Before? Okay, okay, yeah. So the idea is that um, you have this like plane or whatever, and you have this line intersecting the plane, and the question that Adar had is why can't like why does it have to be the intersection? Why can't you just take the set here, like this? I was thinking um, that, more like abstractly than that, because that kind of set can't actually de be defined in this scenario. Exactly. Well, that that that's the that's the that's the problem, right? Like, at first, I was confused too because your point seemed like to completely throw me off. You know, why not just take this set that already exists in the bigger bigger topology? But th the point is that this set here does not exist. Like, it's a line, and a line is not an open set in the two D plane. And so that's like why intersection is very useful, I guess. This is very hand wavy, but to me, in intuitively, this makes sense. Yeah, there, there's like, um, I think like the best way to explain it rigorously is relating it to continuous functions. Um, because if you think about how the inverse of any open set should be open, uh well you can like uh here let me let me draw so you have like a function right mm -hmm. f a to b and let's say that a inherits the topology of b and a is a strict subset of b um so then the topology on A, and let's say the open sets of B, like the topology of B is T and the open sets are denoted as U of T. U of T. Ah, yes. ha, ha, ha. A very good university. 
<laughs> um, so yeah, T is the topology on B, and U just denotes an arbitrary open set in T. Or sorry, this should be an element. <clears throat> okay. So now we define the topology on A. So we'll just we'll call this T B. And we'll define the topology on A to be um, all the sets uh, uh, all the sets I don't know U A where U A equals I don't know if this is the right notation, uh, but UA equals the intersection of U with A. Or maybe it's just, maybe it's just the intersection of U with A for all U. What's the big idea of So the of idea, this? yeah, the like idea no is, the yeah. idea, well, it's just to frame, if we want to talk about it rigorously, it helps to like actually write out what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, the thing is like conti continuity is like a, conti a function is continuous if for any, any open set in the image, the inverse of that open set is also an open set, right? And defining the, subsp the subspace topology this way gives us like a really natural way to do that, right? Because any UA just maps to the u just maps to u or like whoops should use different notation any ua just maps to u under the inverse um so or like any u intersect a just maps to u <laughs> um and that's not something that you can so naturally do unless you have this specific definition. And so okay. that's kind of why I thought it might be, uh, uh, that's, that was kind of like the aha moment for me, where like I could see rigorously why the subspace topology was defined why the way it was. Okay. It's probably not super clear. It. Yeah, do you have like yeah. a more hand wavy example <laughs> that you can use? um it, sure sure yeah so we have let us define no, no, no hand wavy no notation <laughs> if if it's possible if it, if if this is the type of aha moment where it's like you have to work through the example it, 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 like like it, it it's not like um i, I just want to clear do you mind clearing that it, it's going to be hand wavy but it, it'll still use like some level of rigor it's just it won't be it won't be nearly as much as what i just did so you have the standard topology in r so just officially it's a real line and we want to look at the subspace topology that a subset of r inherits right so let's say in this case the subset is negative one one right and it's closed so one and negative one are included so now all of the so now the subspace topology and we'll call this uh, S. Now the subspace topology on negative one one will include all of the open intervals inside, but it'll also include like some closed like some closed bracket type things, right? Like the interval. Like this would be. Let me draw it in a different color the this interval would be considered an open set under the standard topology so then we take the intersection of this interval with s and we get this right uh, yeah yeah this okay. thing now that's close and so it, it's not exactly like the um it's not exactly like the uh what's it called like it's not exactly like the topology, like it's not exactly the standard topology. But now if we want to define a continuous function from negative one, oh, I one think I see what you're saying. to R, 
R, this, this interval right here would just map to this. Okay. Kind of think of it like that. Sure. Um, yeah. Or and that's like, uh, or sorry, no, it's the other way around because we're talking about inverses, but yeah. Like the, what I'm saying is that that's difficult to do without the um, subspace topology being defined the way it is. Okay. I can't say I caught the intuition, but- uh, Yeah, I need to think I'll, about this more myself as well. <laughs> I'll, yeah, like this is, I feel the kind of intuition where you have to walk through it yourself to get it. Yeah. Um, and then you get like that aha moment. Um, so yeah, well, I'll have to walk through that myself afterwards. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think we've gone over everything. I'm trying to look through the list here. Yeah, continuity has been defined as the open sets. Oh, no, the pre-image of open sets are open, becomes continuous. Then there's the idea that you can um, chain continuous functions together and the total thing will be chained or will also be continuous. That one to me makes sense. Mm -hmm. And um, the proof is, in, is in, or very briefly, the proof is that like you ask the question. So normally you ask the question if the pre-image of open sets are open. In this case, you ask if the pre-image of the pre-image are open or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you just go down the chain and you do double yeah. pre-image instead of a single time. And that's how you, sh you give the proof that the whatever composite maps are continuous. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. Maybe we can quickly theorize about manifolds. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's, it's a word I've always wanted to learn, I guess. That's one thing. Um, <laughs> but along with like other, other fancy words in math, like, um, oh, manifold was the main one, I guess. Um, Universal property. I guess some other stuff too. But yeah, I think we're good. Unless anybody has any last comments? We could talk about manifolds very briefly. Nah, I feel, I, I don't know. I don't think it's a, a good idea. Because Lena, you haven't like went and looked at anything about manifolds, right? Yeah, not yet. So. I think the idea of a manifold is actually pretty simple. It's just, I, it's just any space that resembles Euclidean space locally. So like you can just think of it as any smooth space, right? Like if it's you like zoom darn, in, you get a straight, idea, yeah? The idea is that when, when you're like on the receiving end of an explanation, unless you've like went through it before, I feel that it's boring. Like from my point of view, like when that's happened to me before. I don't mind. Uh, I mean, like I'm so happy to listen. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, to, sure. me, to me, that seems like a super like intuitive, like no need for rigor because obviously the rigor you want to go through yourself yeah um but yeah this is just like i feel like it's pretty easy to understand like th this is a this, let's say this is our manifold and we just keep zooming in over and over and over on like one tiny piece of it eventually you'll get a straight line straight line we could also have like a 3d manifold like a ball or sorry like i, I guess it's technically a 2d and you just keep zooming, even though it's curved, you keep zooming in over and over Maybe and eventually you get a, a plane, right? Yeah. So then if you have something like this with a cusp, if you zoom in on this over and over, the cusp doesn't go away, like the little point, mm -hmm. no matter how much you zoom in, it just keeps looking the same. And so that's not a manifold because of that. It doesn't mm -hmm. resemble like Euclidean space. Um, and then like, there's like more comp there's like different kinds of manifolds but they all kind of oh. point at the same thing yeah there's at the start of the video he gave this this definition here he said space time is a four-dimensional topological manifold with a smooth atlas carrying a torsion-free connection compatible with a laurentian <laughs> metric and a space-time orientation <laughs> satisfying the einstein equations like, oh my god <laughs> Whatever that at, means. <laughs> at the same time, that is like such a compact explanation, you know? Like I have no idea what half of those words mean, but 
it's like so oh i had a question are we switching over to this like lecture series for gravity now or like or like how mm, mm. like which one are we sticking with like yeah first of all I, i'm very open to suggestions at this point um what happened is that i watched the fourth video in the other lecture like the other series and it was very confusing like it assumed a lot of knowledge mm -hmm. um whereas this one here felt like a better introduction to topology mm -hmm. i think the next video makes sense for topological manifolds because it's a natural progression mm -hmm. and then the video on multi-linear algebra is the best video i've ever seen on algebra period like it's just so many i got like 10 aha moments or something crazy yeah, um, i i still but, don't get tensors so hopefully that'll clear it yes up. exactly <laughs> that, that's one thing that like finally made sense and something with like the co-vector or something i don't know the point is um once i'm once that linear uh, or that multi-linear algebra video is done then i'm not sure how to progress in theory we could keep going through the videos but at the same time i would be open to like suggestions like this lecture here that I've watched before is like absolutely amazing. And it's a good, con like a good continuation. We should do that. And then I'll be like, yeah, for sure. Let's do it. Um, but okay. yeah, that's the current plan. Sounds good. Cool. Yeah. In any case, uh, yeah. See you guys next week with manifolds. All right, cool. Yeah. This was fun. Yeah. Hey guys. All right. Bye. See you.